everyone, thanks so much for coming. Um, obviously, it was a super exciting uh, evening last night and um, a huge day for the franchise today. Um, before we get started, I want to introduce our newest Cleveland Cavaliers. We have Dylan here and Darius. And so I'd like to present uh, you guys with your jerseys. <laughs> here you go, Darius. Congratulations, guys. Appreciate it. They didn't want to give them back to me. They're holding on to them so much. Um, but no, that's great. Um, welcome to town. We were super excited for you, for you guys to get, to get going. Um, thanks so much for the families for being here. I know it's a special occasion. Enjoy all of this. Um, but this is a wonderful franchise and city um, that's going to embrace, embrace your kids. So thank you so much for being here. Um, with that, I, I mean, I, I want to just open it up. I know we have a lot of questions for our newest edition, so let's, let's start. Tom Withers, Associated Press, Dylan, Darius, welcome. Darius, if I could start with you, how challenging was it last year to only play four games in college? I know you went to Vandy because of Coach Drew and things like that. How, how tough was that to have to sit out? And what did you learn about yourself while sitting out and waiting to play basketball for so long? It was really challenging for me. Um, this is the first time I've ever been away from the game that I really love. So it was really hard. But I mean, everyone faces adversity. I got over the hump, and I mean, that's in the past now. I'm ready to get going in Cleveland. Name's Joe Varden from The Athletic. I spoke with Coach Drew a little bit last night, and he was saying that um, among the many things that you've done development-wise, he said you've played with pros over the summer in, in Tennessee, and you named, I think, Robert Covington maybe is one. Can you tell us a little bit about those games, who was there, and just sort of what you got out of them and maybe how that helped you turn, turn into the player that you are right now? Just having that challenge against pros, I mean, it's a lot of talent around in Nashville, uh, as you can see two Nashville kids <laughs> <laughs> on the podium today. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of challenges during the summer. Um, Robert Covington, John Jenkins, Damian Jones coming back. And I mean, we just had some pickup games and just played really hard and competed against each other. Did you have any pros? At Daryl Ryder, 92 through the fan. Welcome to Cleveland. Um, Coach Beeline, you like the, the two guard system. Could you touch on the prospect of having both Darius and Colin in your uh, in your backcourt? Yeah, we, we talked about that a lot. It's a great question because it is truly a two guard uh, front and it opens the floor so much for, for everyone because you can put people in the corners. So he's sort of like the corner guy. He's sort of like the guys out front, the courts open. And it really, uh, it really, help, really allows the guards to have so much more freedom. And if you have two of them, you know, and that's the, the traditional way it is. Whether it was, uh, you know, back at Michigan, Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway back there, or Karis Levert and Derek Walton, it was just sort of this open court that allowed them to really have a lot of freedom. At the same time, they got to be very, you know, good, great teammates that see each other, can score for their own, but also find the open shooters. So the two of them are going to be beautiful together, to answer your question, <laughs> in a much shorter way. And they're going to make me a much better coach than I am. Marla Ride now, our Akron Beacon Journal. Coach, how does that, and Darius, maybe you could answer that when he's done, but how long does it take to develop the kind of symbiosis, I guess, or something that it need, you need for that kind of system? Can it happen yeah, the yeah, first year? Yeah, I don't think the, the type of young men they both are. You know, we talked with, with Colin this when this became a possibility and he was all in favor of it as well. And then we, we told, when we went out, we went to visit uh, Darius last week and we spoke with him about him and he was like, I mean, you just look what Portland's done with those two terrific guards and it, it's worked very well. I don't think it's gonna take very long at all. The, um, you know, the Portland sort of model is, I mean, that's kind of like shooting for the stars. How excited are you to try to do that? I'm really excited. Um, Colin, he's, he's really good. And I mean, I think that I can help him. And I think we can both combine and just do some crazy things in Cleveland. 
Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Darius, what kind of relationship, if any, do you have with Colin? Um, me and Colin has played against each other at USA Basketball, but that's pretty much it. I haven't really talked to him yet, so I'm just looking forward to talking to him and them and connecting with him. And Coach, for you, um, was Darius somebody that you tried to recruit when you were at Michigan? Yeah, a little bit. If I remember, we made a few phone calls, and uh, you know, because because. Uh, his daddy, his, we knew of his dad, obviously, and he had such great recommendations from, from everybody we saw. But uh, I think maybe, I don't know if we got a commitment early and a bird in the hands we were through in the bush, but we would have loved to have coached him, but we can, it, it, now I get to do that. Uh, I have this question for uh, Dylan, actually, at JoeGabrielCavs.com. Uh, Dylan, you talked about you guys both being in Nashville. What was it like putting kind of Belmont on your shoulders? I mean. First tourney appearance, first tourney win. You were the biggest, obviously the best player in a mid-major. What's it like making that transition from now to the pros? Uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a pretty smooth transition. Obviously, it's a, it's a big bit different coming from Belmont. Um, obviously, coming to the pros, but uh, you know, being able to lead Belmont such a great program and uh, being able to um, play alongside for Coach Bird um, and help him get those wins in the tournament and uh, ultimately just represent Belmont and all mid-majors um, everywhere is, is definitely an honor. Dylan, I wanted to ask you what your range is like off the golf tee. <laughs> I, uh, I actually played with Coach Bird uh, yesterday morning uh, to try to just, you know, go out and ease the nerves a little bit and have some fun. And I, uh, I hit one 350 off the tee, so <laughs> that is their answer. <laughs> Hey, and, and playing in a school like Belmont, I mean, the OVC had a really nice year this year. Um, w was there a worry that you'd be overlooked, or were you pretty confident that, you know, as long as you played your game, the NBA was going to find you? Yeah, I wasn't too, you know, caught up or worried on, you know, um, whether I was going to get picked or not, things like that. I was just trying to, you know, focus on myself and, and just help, you know, Belmont be the best it can be and ultimately, um, you know, try to lead them in the NCAA tournament, which we did, and just try to become the best player I can be. And, you know, if that, um, you know, helps me end up you know, playing in the NBA and, um, you know, get picked in the NBA draft, then that comes with it. But I was just trying to focus on myself and get better uh, and try to be the best player that I could be. Spencer Davies, Basketball Insiders. Welcome, Cleveland, guys. Uh, Darius, I noticed that you had a lot of family members in the green room last night. I think over 60 is what I read. Um, what kind of influence have they, have they had on you and how have they helped you through this entire process? They've helped me a lot. Um, yeah, 60 was a lot. I think I had all time, well, second all time clutch record in family members. So, <laughs> uh, first, well, I'm really happy about that. Uh, you know, my supporting cast is really big, but these are my main three right here. Um, they've been my side the entire, entire way. I mean, since I came out, my mom really. So, I mean, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm glad that they're here with me. So, hopefully, they just continue coming with me. And we know about the playmaking and the the, uh, the three-point range, but what do you think is a common misconception about your game coming into this? Uh, my leadership role. Um, I think I'm a pretty vocal leader as a young age. Um, and just putting my teammates where it needs to be, I think that's a hidden for me. Terry Pluto, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland.com, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Darius, when you had that private workout with the, for the Cavaliers, what did you do to impress them? <laughs> and then what did they ask you maybe that either surprised you or whatever? So talk about that workout. I think I shot the ball really well in the private workout. Uh, I think that's what caught coach's eye. <laughs> um, but I just went out and just did me. Um, just went over the drills that I always do every day. Um, I believe I shot the ball at a high clip, like I said. So I think that caught a lot of people's eyes. <laughs> one um, assuming you do play Darius and Colin together who's the one who's the two it doesn't make a difference it really doesn't make a difference. you get out of position you know it's the whole idea of positionless basketballs we'll have two forwards we'll have two guards we'll have a big center and and that will all depend on who we're playing and 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 who's playing well who's injured hopefully we can just morph into whatever shape we need to take for games as time goes on and then um, when we first talked to you uh, I think in Chicago, you were saying, hey, I'm, I'm coming from college. I need to watch film. I need to figure mm -hmm. this out. 
it sounds like you have you've got more of an idea of what you want to do. Yeah, not every day. I mean, every day I've coached basketball, I learn more. So right now, you know, what I'm trying, I've surrounded myself with getting, having uh, Tony Lang here, who's here today, and, and J.B. Bickerstaff to really, those guys with great NBA experience have really helped me as well. And they're all in to very humble people who are just really trying to help as much as they can, and they are. So that, that's just, it's, there's a process for me too, right? And there's one thing I do, I work it out and I usually figure it out. And uh, having players like this and the, the, some of the guys that we've worked out from our team have come back and worked out, uh, we're gonna figure it out. Darius, when you were at this workout, did you feel, and I guess you did the Lakers also, did you feel extra pressure because you, you, know, you didn't play and you didn't be at the combine? And also, how far out were you making shots from? Um, it was a little bit of pressure because the whole staff came. And I mean, that really meant a lot to me. When the whole staff come out, I know that they're really interested. So I knew I had to come and put on a show for them. <laughs> but it was no pressure at all. But shooting range, I was, I was pretty deep out, I think, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, he, he was shooting from back in Nashville, and we were in <laughs> California. <laughs> Dylan, what were your expectations going into last night? Did you think that you could be a first-round pick? Uh, yeah, I definitely thought I could be. Um, you know, I didn't want to set too many expectations because – you know, you get kind of get caught up on, you know, numbers and this and that and where you think you're going to get picked and sometimes you can get let down. So I kind of just went into it with open mind and knowing that, um, you know, a year ago from, from today, if I thought I would be even close to being in this situation, that I would be, you know, more than happy with that. So I kind of just went in with that mindset and just, um, just was going to be happy with whatever happened. Jeff Chudell, News Herald. Darius, can you talk about, you've played in, well, your team's won four state championships, is that correct? Yes, sir. So talk about doing that repeatedly, especially when you were so young, and how that, those pressure situations might prepare you for the NBA competition. I believe that I'm a competitor. Um, I love to win, and I really hate to lose. So, I mean, winning state championships, that means a lot. Um, I mean, four in a row, that's really tough. So just having that mentality of just staying focused, staying locked in in practice, I think that's just going to carry over into the big leagues. John, I've talked to a lot of people that have watched your practices over the years, whether it was at Canisius or LeMoyne or whatever in high school, and said you, may, you do an inordinate amount of shooting early in the practice. Was that a common thread here in these three picks? Obviously, guys that can, can fire away. If, if you follow any of the really successful teams, you know, you can s just see more and more of it. So I, I think that uh, what obviously seeing Darius shoot it was, you know, was, was really good. And not that you can, you can play with a, a lot of different point guards and still win. But we felt, as I felt, as soon as, uh, and, and we, f we felt collectively, as soon as we, we got Darius with that type of ability, now got to give him more space now, right? And the space comes from, from Dylan. So. Uh, and so it's just having more shooters on the court. You know, you still got to be able to know how to play, willing to defend. You know, uh, have have some quickness about them as well, and all these guys do. But I, the more the, the more shooters you got on the court, that's who's winning right now. There's no question about it. Darius, just a quick thing about the 60 people. How far? Who is the? How far do they come from? Um, most of my family came from Gary, Indiana. That's where I'm originally from. So the majority of them came from there. Dylan, uh, you're leading the OVC in rebounding. What, I mean, you've always had good rebounding numbers, but what goes into that? Is it kind of an anticipation about the ball or? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot of anticipation, kind of um, just kind of anticipating where the ball's going to come off the rim. But a lot of it's more of a mentality thing, you know, um, just wanting to crash the glass every time and kind of going in with that mentality that every ball coming off the rim is yours and you got to go get it, so. Coach, I just have a quick question. I know you put out a statement about this, but hiring Lindsay, just how, I don't know, do you feel like a trailblazer? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like I'm, like I'm really smart. That's what I feel like. <laughs> After spending a couple of weeks with, with Lindsay right now, it, it's actually a home run for us. I mean, she's really, she's outstanding. She sees just some, some things that, that, that I, I may not see, Tony may not see, JV might not see, and it's just, 
like a, another, you put, you, you put the puzzle together of your team and you put another puzzle together of your staff and, and they're just, just as important. And so we're trying to fill those pieces that who can give us the most uh, to, to be the best in the long run and she's been perfect for us. Uh, Dylan, uh, Fred McLeod, Fox Sports Ohio, to your left. A uh, couple things, uh, golf is near and dear to my heart, so I have a question. Reaching the crossroads of uh, golf and basketball, that choice, uh, talk about that. And then also, um, being ambidextrous, as Kobe mentioned last night, I watched a lot of video of you today, and you do use your offhand a lot. Are you more left-handed or right-handed? Uh, honestly, if I didn't shoot left-handed, I'd be pretty more dominantly right. Um, like I, I like to finish right, drive right. Um, but obviously I can do, do both, and that's obviously one of the things that helps me a lot is I can pass with both hands. Uh, so just being able to you know, go either way and be confident going either way and being able to pass with both hands is definitely a, a major asset. I noticed you mash your golf ball right hand. So going back to the choice between basketball and golf, how difficult was it? Uh, it was actually a very difficult choice for me early on. Uh, it happened my, between my sophomore and junior years of high school. Uh, I played both of them growing up my entire life. I, was, I excelled at both of them. And uh, I had a really good junior year of high school, and I didn't play AAU up until then. And um, I decided, you know, I want to try out the AAU circuits, you know, see where I can, it can take me, see if I can get any offers. And um, was able to get on a really good team, Indiana Elite, and um, ended up picking about 20 offers up in one weekend. And I was like, you know, this is probably <laughs> the sport for me, and I never looked back. And I um, was very fortunate to be able to go to Belmont, and you know, obviously it got me to where I am here today. So. Chris again, uh, Darius, Kobe said last night that you wanting to be here in Cleveland was meaningful. What was it about Cleveland that appealed to you and what did Tristan Thompson tell you about playing for the Cavs? Um, I mean, I had a connection with Tristan since last summer. Um, I mean, him just talking about the facilities and his coaching staff and the city itself. I mean, I heard a lot of great things about Cleveland and I'm just excited to be here and just Enjoy every minute with everybody. Uh, Darius, I have a hard-hitting basketball question for you. Uh, can you describe the kind of that young Jedi look that you had going <laughs> last night for the day? I just wanted to go with a different style. I wanted to be comfortable. I didn't want to wear a tight suit. Um, I mean, it was a one-of-one -one piece, so it was it meant a lot to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great job, Darius. Great job.